Have you ever wondered how fetus get food from the mother? When the mother eats, does she get the food first or the baby? How the fetus breathe inside the womb? Sure, you'll be having many questions. Well, the baby doesn't eat food, it gets nutrients from her. The baby is connected to the mother by a temporary organ called placenta. It is the primary site for nutrients and gas exchange. The placenta and the umbilical cord forms a transport system between the mother and the fetus. The fetus get nutrients from two sources, from the mother's diet and also by breaking down fat, muscle and bones in her body. These nutrients are dissolved in her blood. The placenta captures the nutrients and transports it to the fetus through the umbilical cord. The placenta develops from two parts, the fetal part and the maternal part. The fetal part is derived from the chorion, while the maternal part is derived from the endometrium. So how does the placenta develop? Let's start from the morula. In the first week, the morula is formed on the third day after fertilization following zygote formation. It is formed in the fallopian tube of female reproductive system. It is a solid mass of approximately 12 to 32 blastomeres. The blastomeres become smaller with each division and they tightly align themselves against each other to form a compact ball of cells. On the fourth day after fertilization, the morula entered the uterus from the fallopian tube. Soon, a fluid-filled cavity, the blastocyst cavity, develops inside it. After it has floated in the uterine secretion for approximately two days, shedding of zona pellucida, which is a specialized cell matrix, permits the hatched blastocyst to increase rapidly in size while floating in the uterus. This early embryo derives its nourishment from secretions of the uterine gland. The blastomeres are now pushed to one pole forming inner cell mass and it's surrounded by outer cell layer. The outer cell layer is the tropoblast which gives rise to the embryonic part of the placenta. The inner cell mass is called embryoblast which gives rise to the embryo. The zoonopil lucida is a specialized cell matrix. One of the role of the zoonopil lucida is to prevent premature implantation, thus preventing ectopic pregnancy. On the sixth day after fertilization, which is the twentieth day of menstrual cycle, the blastocyst attached to the endometrial epithelium, usually adjacent to the embryonic pole. As soon as it attaches to the endometrial epithelium, the blastocytes start to proliferate rapidly and gradually differentiate into two layers, the inner layer of cytotropoblast and the outer layer of syncytiotropoblast. The cytotropoblast consists of mononuclear cells, while the syncytiotropoblast consists of multinucleated protoplastic mass in which no cell boundaries can be observed. On the seventh day, a layer of cells the hyperblast appear on the surface of the embryoblast facing the blastocystic cavity. In the second week, on the eighth day, the blastocyst is embedded in the endometrial stroma. The inner cell mass differentiate into high columnar cells and small cuboidal cells. The high columnar cells are epiblast and the small cuboidal cells are hyperblast. A small cavity appears within the epiblast. This cavity enlarges to become the amniotic cavity, and it is lined by amnioblast and the epiblast cells. On the ninth day, at the embryonic pole, the vacuoles appear in the syncytium. When these vacuoles fuse, they form large lacunae. This phase of tropoblast development is known as lacunar stage. Meanwhile, at the ab embryonic pole, hypoblasts give flat cells that form thin membrane. This membrane, together with the hypoblast, form the primitive yolk sac. During the formation of yolk sac, some of the migrating hypoblast cells transdifferentiate into mesenchymal cells, forming the extra embryonic mesoderm. Between the two layers of extra embryonic mesoderm is the extra embryonic column or cryonic cavity, 
which surrounds the yolk sac and the amniotic cavity, except the connecting stalk, which connects the germ disc to the tropoblast. The extra embryonic mesoderm layer that lies adjacent to the huser's membrane outside the yolk sac is the extra splenoporotic mesoderm. The extra embryonic mesoderm that lies adjacent to the cytotropoblast layer is the layer of extra embryonic somatopleuritic mesoderm. Cells of the syncytiotropoblast penetrate deeper into the stroma and erode the endothelial lining of the maternal capillaries. These capillaries, which are congested and dilated, are known as sinusoids. Lacuni form interconnecting network evident at the embryonic pole. The syncytial lacuni become continuous with the sinusoids and maternal blood enters the lacunar system, establishing the uteroplacental circulation. The direction of blood flow is determined by the pressure. As the pressure in the arterioles is higher than the venules, the direction of blood flow will be from the arterioles to the lacunae and then to the venules. The cytotropoblast, meanwhile, forms cellular columns that are penetrating and surrounded by syncytium, forming primary villi. In the third week, the mesenchyma grow into the primary villi, forming a core of mesenchymal tissue. The villi at this stage is called secondary chorionic villi. It covers the entire surface of the chorionic sac. Some mesenchymal cells in the villi soon differentiate into capillaries and blood cells. They are called tertiary chorionic villi when blood vessels are visible in them. Capillaries in the tertiary villi make contact with the capillaries developing in the mesoderm of chorionic plate and the connecting stalk. These vessels in turn establish contact with the interembryonic circulatory system, connecting the placenta and the embryo. Cytotropoblastic cells in the villi penetrate progressively into the overlying syncytium until they reach the maternal endometrium. Here they establish contact with the similar extension of neighboring villi stems, forming a thin outer cytotropoblastic shell. This shell gradually surrounds the topoblast entirely and attaches the chorionic sac firmly into the maternal endometrium. Villi that extend from the chorionic plate to the decidua basalis are called stem or ensuring villa. Those that branch from the sides of the stem villi are previlli, through which exchange of nutrients and other factors will occur. The villi at the embryonic pole, which is in contact with the decidua basalis, increase greatly in size and complexity, and hence this part is named the chorion frondosum. The part of the chorion that is in contact with the decidua capsularis undergo atrophy, so that by the fourth month scarcely a trace of the villi is left. This part of the chorion becomes smooth and it is named the chorion livae. As the chorion grows, the chorion leve comes in contact with the decidua parietalis and these layers fuse. Thus, the placenta develops from the chorion frondosum and the decidua basalis.